What you may not be so aware of is the risk of contact with badgers and their excretions within your farm buildings. Research studies have shown that badgers may actually visit farm buildings quite regularly. A study in Gloucestershire, which had cameras on the buildings of 32 farms for over two years, found that badgers visited over 50% of the farms surveyed. The frequency of visits to these farms varied enormously, but on 10% of these farms, badger visits occurred on over two-thirds of the nights the cameras were in place. Often visits were made by more than one badger, with video evidence showing more than 10 badgers in one building. While some of the farmers were aware that badgers visited their farm buildings, others were not. Even those that knew that they had badger visits generally underestimated the frequency of those visits. John Close has got a beef herd. He took part in the Ferris study between 2007 and 2009, looking at the level of badger activity. And as part of this project, we put exclusion measures only on his cattle housing. Fortunately, we were asked to be involved uh, with the surveillance, the camera surveillance, and being involved with that made me realise just how important it is for biosecurity with with uh, with stopping badgers going in buildings, because they are opportunists. They do go in, and I've seen them go in, and um, it is peace of mind. So, were you surprised at the level of badger activity that the cameras showed you had? Oh yes, absolutely. Over the two years the cameras were surveyed him. We had over 450 incidences of badgers entering the buildings and I did know there were badgers going in but not to that degree. The study also investigated a range of simple badger exclusion measures to see how effective they were at reducing the potential for direct or indirect contact between badgers and cattle. As you can see from this badger skull, a badger's head is actually quite small. And um, it seems to be that if a badger can get its head through a gap, it can get into any building. So even on a door like this, where the gap at the bottom looks relatively small, as you can see, a badger would be able to easily get under there. The buildings visited by badgers most frequently were feed stores, where they consumed a variety of foods and were observed defecating or urinating directly onto stored feed. This could then be fed directly to your cattle, and cattle are much less likely to avoid faeces when it is mixed in with their feed. John Reimer has a beef suckler herd. He also took part in the Ferris study and as part of this study we put exclusion measures on all of his buildings to try and stop the badgers getting in. Could you just explain um, what was in this building here? This is the old stone barn where we've stored our feed and uh, we had the cameras were put inside to monitor what, um, what was getting inside and we found badgers were getting in. So what the, uh, the, the quite simple measure was that it was to just sheet off the bottom of the door and that stopped anything getting in. Were you surprised that badgers could get through a gap that small? Well I was. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought they, they, if it hadn't been for the cameras monitoring and I, I wouldn't have realised that they, they could have got in there. So it was quite, a, quite an interesting um, exercise. That's right, but it's quite, it was quite an interesting one. Badgers also visited cattle houses where they were observed feeding out of troughs at the same time as cattle, hunting for rodents, eating invertebrates and collecting straw and hay to take back to the set for bedding. So I can see you've put some more measures on here. Um, why did you put this gate on? Well, there, there were originally there were some old wooden doors here that were very badly fitting, and I hadn't realised at the time that uh, that, um, that this point here was a was a place where they could get in, and um, that by sheeting the door and keeping them out, it, it was it was stopping them access to all the cattle sheds. Uh, this entrance here is naturally sealed off with a sliding door, so that was no problem. But then, where the badgers were coming in was, <coughs> uh, until sealed off, was round the back there, uh, uh, through the old broken doors, and round under the, under the rails, and obviously into the pens and on beyond, you know, to, to the, rest of the rest of the cattle. Okay, yeah, that's a good example of where you don't need to do every direct access into the cattle shed, but where there might be areas around the sort of perimeter that you can block off. So, John, can you tell us what was done here? Well, these, this gate here was just an ordinary gate that had tin on. It was actually corrugated tin, and there was no flap on the bottom as there is now. It was just a gap, and so obviously the badgers could go in as they pleased and um, this gate here was just an ordinary rail gate with no tin on so there again the badgers could go through and so it is peace of mind that I know they're not going in there now which is good I think. So how does the flat work? Well the problem 
here being if we'd add a gate right to the ground the ground is uneven and when you open the gate back it won't actually open back so the answer was to put a flap on and it works very well this bit of rope just enables me to lift it up and fold it up there and then put a pin through the angle iron and it's safe then did you know you had badgers going into your farm buildings i have at night when i've been carving cows etc i've seen them about and um, i've actually seen odd one in the building at different times but you know we also suspected they were going in so this is great that you know, we know we're keeping the badgers out now and that is very good i'm pleased this here is part of what was done many years ago uh, but it's adequate it keeps the badgers out it seems to work just, um, just so to show that you don't need to put on completely new gates, you no, can use what you've got no, lying absolute, around. To absolutely try and right. Block yes, up the gaps. yes, yes. It mightn't look quite so nice, but it's practical. It works. That's that's yeah. the important thing, isn't it? We've got a solid gate here, but a, a bit of a gap appear has appeared. Yes, it is important to keep your eye on these gaps. It's, it's obviously where I go in out every day with the tractor, and because this isn't concrete out here, it does give and every now and again I do clean up and scrape up and and make sure it's it, it, it's filled up to some degree because it wouldn't want to be much deeper and the badger would go underneath that you've got this nice new building since we were here doing the study what have you done here well yes this building we've only had cattle in here for about 12 weeks so it is new um, we've incorporated in the new build what we learned from yourselves and with the old buildings. And these gates here, although they're second-hand gates, they're gates we had about, we've modified them to incorporate all the security measures with them. We've added to the bottom of the gate a section and welded new steel on, lengthened the ends, etc., and put new tin on. And from the outside, it looks quite new, although it's not, but it's very adequate and um, it works well. With the feeding passage gate, we've gone right to the ground, um, but with the area that we clean up, we've left a gap underneath, the same as the old buildings, and put a flap on. And you've got the concrete underneath this gate here, I see, so you yes. won't have the same problem of, yes. of having the tyre tracks no, quite. making a gap. Absolutely. This is a purpose-built building, so we've tried to incorporate everything to combat any badger problems. It's easier to do in a new building, obviously. Yep, excellent. Looks good. Yes.